Hey, fourth graders. Um, we're going to talk about seeds and bulbs. Both of these deal with plants, and both of them deal with making new plants, reproduction in plants. So they are specialized structures that help make new plants. And if we think about the structures of organisms, those structures either help with growth, survival, or reproduction. So we're going to focus in on reproducing, making new plants. So most plants that we grow start from seed. And as they start from seed, things have to be right. They will come from the flower portion of the plant. So pollen makes contact, pollenization occurs, and the pollen tube goes down and goes into the whole ovule and all of that and begins to form a fruit in some way, a pod or a husk or a shell to protect that developing seed. Once the seed is mature enough, the flower dies off and then the fruit begins to grow and it creates this protection around the seed. And so, then once we have the seed, then the plant needs a way of dispersing, spreading the seed. And we talked about that earlier in the year. We could spread seeds by water, wind, humans, we spread seeds right here, all these seed packets. I'm going to show you some different seeds here in a second. All these seed packets are ways that we spread seeds when we do farming or gardening, agriculture. Animals spread seeds. They eat the fruit, they go elsewhere and go to the bathroom and deposit it. Or um, some of them, it sticks to their fur, like burdock. But there are ways of dispersing it there. Water disperses seeds because some of the seeds can float on water and they go. But with it, what it comes down to is the seed reaches soil or a good place to put down roots to grow. The temperature has to be right. The amount of water needs to be right. The amount of sunlight needs to be right. It's not going to be exactly the same for every plant because there's little variations in needs. But, so they all start from a seed. So I've got, come on right in here. Let's zoom right in. We've got bean seeds. We have pea seeds. I've got some sugar cube melon, which are cantaloupe seeds. And then I grew these. These are up on the tippy top of the grow tower. Oh, hang on. These are Swiss chard seeds, like spinach. And so we see that the seeds are all different things. Here's a way that seeds come in. A pine cone. Dandelion, this is getting ready to seed. This is one I cut yesterday when I was did mowing after. And then there are seeds actually inside this spaghetti squash. And the seeds are protected inside. And so remember, there's that element of protection that they have to have, all right? Now, seeds do that job of helping plants to grow once the conditions are right. And so what happens is when that seed starts to grow, the water's right, the temperature's right, the soil's right, even the amount, the oxygen and carbon dioxide, the air is right. The seed splits open somewhere on that seed. The seed splits open, roots grow down, shoot or stem goes up to begin to gather sunlight and continue to grow and produce itself. But the seed actually has stored energy inside to start the whole process because they can't immediately make their own food like they normally do. So those are seeds. I said we're gonna talk about bulbs too. Seeds and bulbs do that same job which make new plants. So let's go over and take a look at some bulbs. I dug up some dan, uh, not dandelion, daffodils. And if you've already watched the plant parts video, uh, the bulb parts video, here is our bulb. Now, looks a bit like an onion, doesn't it? But what we have here is we've got the roots and we've got this bulb portion and the shoot coming up. 
And what it is, is that these bulbs are dormant. That means they're sleeping most of the year. This is just a big bundle of stored food and energy. And they're dormant most of the year. Usually, these guys come up in springtime. So once the temperatures start to warm up, there's more warmth from the sunlight on the soil. And then once the conditions are right, these roots, now look at these, it's a whole bunch of them, but they all have roots on them. The roots begin to grow down. There's a main shoot part goes up and the leaves come out. Once the leaves get everything right, then we'll begin to see a stem emerge with a bud on the end. And that stem emerges with the bud so that we can get a flower. And then that attracts the pollinators and it attracts the bees. And this continues to grow and get bigger so it can gather more energy. Well, gets pollinated, creates, they will create seeds, but also as they're sending more of the food that they make down, it'll create another bulb. It'll shoot off a little part of the bulb to another plant and they break apart. This was one big, look at this, this was one big cluster. I have to be very careful because I have to carefully yeah. pull these apart and as I pull these apart, look at each one of these has grown into a separate, look at that tiny tiny one, a separate new daffodil plant. And so Eventually, these flowers, stems will bud with the flower on the end, and they'll be warm enough for this to grow. And these typically, yeah, a lot of them in the springtime. And so what I'm gonna do is I have another example of a bulb, um, a bulb plant, other than daffodils, and actually, they are flowering right now. So we're gonna go take a look at that. That other one, Come on over. You coming? Come on over. It's right over here. And actually we have a ton of them. They're called tulips. And so, this has sent out, here's that stem, the bud on the end. See how this one's getting ready to blossom. See, oh, here's a daffodil that has blossomed. This one's toward the end of its cycle, its life cycle. but. They do that. And so, turn toward here. Thank you. And so, both seeds and bulbs create new plants. And they also, once they start to grow those new plants, those new plants have a lot of the same parts. Those parts that we looked at last week in the Who Needs Dirt video. All right, so get on Seesaw and complete your task. You need two facts that you learned about bulbs and two facts you learned about seeds, and then I need one similarity between the structures, the parts, or the function of seeds and bulbs. Nice, complete sentence for that final answer. All right. I look forward to your answers. Bye.